Does this sound anything like your workout plan? You invite a stranger to live with you and your family for one month as your personal stranger, but he's not just any old stranger. He is David Goggins, a Navy SEAL, who says, if it doesn't suck, we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Jesse Etzer wanted, apparently. He's the owner of the Atlanta Hawks, co-founded Marquee Jets, and partnered with Zico. That's a coconut water. Etzer's new book is called Living with a SEAL, 31 Days, Training with the Toughest Man on the Planet. Jesse Itzler is here along with David Goggins. And after reading the book, I do think you are the toughest man on the planet, David Goggins. But Jesse, you start us off. Because you, you, you two are at a race. You're there with your friends. He's there. What stood out to you about him? Well, I first saw David at a 100-mile race. And I was doing this part of a relay, with a relay team with six friends. And he was doing it alone. At around mile 70, I saw him. He was about 100 pounds heavier. He broke all the bones in both of his, small bones in both of his feet and a kidney failure and finished the race. And I'd never seen anything like this in my life. And I was like, I gotta meet this guy and see what, what makes him tick. So what did you do? Well, I, flew uh, out to see him. I literally cold called him. Yeah. And um, I flew out to see him and I was sitting with him for about five minutes and five minutes into our conversation, I said, you know what? The buckets in my life would be so much better if a little of what he had rubbed off onto me and I invited him to come live with my wife and I for a month. And what does he have? Just determination, grit. You know, grit is a great indicator of future success. Yeah. And he was the grittiest. And he just overcame this in this race. What I saw in his life story, I mean, it's a fascinating life story. He lost 100 pounds in 60 days to become, to try out, to become a Navy SEAL and became one of the best endurance athletes in the planet. And someone with that kind of will and, we and, should show okay. that before and after yeah. picture. Yeah. Look at the before and after picture, Nora, of David. Unbelievable. And so, you, you so did this in two months. Right. Yeah. Well, I did it twice, but that's the first time I did it. <laughs> to get ready. And so, David, when Jesse calls you and says, hey, will you come live with me? <laughs> a stranger. A stranger. What did you say? Well, if you know anything about me, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he hadn't even told his wife. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but what convinced you this was worth trying out? Yeah. You know, he convinced me of his mindset that he was looking for more. And, you know, who can say no to that? Yeah. But you had conditions, David. What were your conditions? You agreed to do this under one condition. Just one condition. Just do what I say. Yeah. Do what That's I it. say no matter what. No and, matter what. And one of those things, you guys are in Boston and you're running. And there's a blizzard or something. Yeah. And you hadn't planned to be there. The plane was delayed or something. And you said to David, look, I can't run. I don't have any underwear. And right. you said what? So what? We're going to run anyway. You know? You said you need legs to run. Right. You need legs to run. Yeah. You don't need underwear. Right. So here you are with bleeding bollies at one point. You yes. say to him, listen, this is hurting. It's painful. And you said, nope, we're going to do another eight miles. All right. I, I just, I don't understand. You, you came into this in good shape. You'd ran marathons for many years. Yeah. I did. But I was in, at the time, I was in a, a routine. And routines are great. But routines can also be a rut. And I just felt like I wasn't getting better. And I felt like, you know, I had to get really, just mix up my routine to get better. And David coming in was like, it was kind of like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Rambo when he moved in. <laughs> it was just mixed it up. Okay, so you did it and you wrote a book about it. Uh, did it change your life so that it has continuing impact today? Definitely. I found out that, you know, we all have a reserve tank and I found out that I had so much more in my reserve tank. Like my baseline was here and he taught me that it really should be up here. And I never went back from that. And that was an important lesson for me. David, where does that willpower come from? You know, it comes from, uh, I had a rough childhood coming up. Um, and I just took all that, you know, negative energy and made it very positive for myself to drive me. I'm a very driven person. Mm -hmm. um, I have passion that almost scares people just to be successful and to make it no matter what. But when you feel, so for most people who, you know, compete and all of us try and work out, when you, when most people feel like they hit a wall, they can't go any farther, what are you saying in your head when that wall comes? Well, the wall, every wall pretty much allowed me to have doors. I'm looking for a door yeah. to get yeah. through it and go to the next limit. No, but at one point, here's David in the house, 2,500 push-ups to repeat of Rocky. You hear Rocky blaring in his room 31 times. Yeah. You believe, that, and then just for grins, you throw in a 50-pound weight vest right. that you have this man running in Central Park with this 50-pound weight vest. Your whole philosophy of it doesn't have to be fun, it has to be effective. I sit back and enjoy the pain. Right. And you live your life, you said, you embrace the pain. I do. I believe the only way you can, everybody's looking for mental toughness. Yeah. Every athlete, everybody in the world is looking for mental toughness. The only way you gain mental toughness is to do things you're not happy doing. 
If you continue doing things that you're satisfied and to make you happy, you're not getting stronger. You're staying where you're at. Either you're getting better, you're getting worse. You're not staying the same. Get out of the routine. Period. Yeah. So what are you doing today? Doing the same thing I was doing last year and last month and last week. I'm continually to look in the mirror, look at the reflection. It's called the accountability mirror. What have I done today to improve David Goggins? Mm -hmm. And every day you do something. Your wife is Sarah Blakely, who you call the Michael Jordan of underwear. <laughs> so when you bring this idea to her. Because she's the founder of Spanx. Because she's the founder of Spanx. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point, Nora. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I just assume everybody knows Spanx. Thanks. <laughs> so, so when you say to Sarah, I want this perfect strength, you said, listen, I did more background check on an assistant than I did with what you called a hunting train machine living in the house. Right. Well, David, just when we made our, our arrangement to come, live with, you know, to come live with the family, he just put his hand out and showed my hand and that was all I needed he looked me in the eye and I knew that you know there was gonna be no problems and I was in, in good shape and David had a saying just going back to what Charlie had said you know he mm -hmm. said when your brain says that you're done you're only 40% done and I think that's something that also drives him and pushes him and and, and something that was a great takeaway for me and that's you know that's been something that always kind of enters my mind and I think back to that and be like you know what I can do more yeah, and, yeah. and there is nothing easy about what he asked you to do no. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. Jesse and David, great to have you here. Congratulations on the book. What a great partnership. Yeah, Thank you, guys. The yeah. two of you together are really awesome. Yeah. Thank really you. Awesome. And Living with a Seal is on sale now.